this video, we'll be laying some of the groundwork for probability. So what we're going to do is introduce a couple definitions and give a couple of examples to help you understand these definitions. So very first thing let's define is experiment. So an experiment is any procedure that, first of all, in theory, could be repeated infinitely many times. And second of all, this procedure has a well-defined set of all the possible outcomes. So for example, say I have 10 M&Ms, four are red and six are brown. One experiment that I could do is pluck out one M&M, record the color, and then put it back. So since I'm putting back the M&Ms rather than eating them, I could repeat this experiment infinitely many times in theory. And the outcomes are well defined because I could either get a red M&M or a brown M&M. All right, so that's our definition of experiment. Now we can move on to the sample space. So we touched on this well-defined set of possible outcomes. Let's give that a name. So that name is going to be the sample space. So the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes and we will denote this usually with a capital S. So this capital S is a set of all possible outcomes. If we just want to look at one possible outcome, then that is just one element in the set, and we can denote that with a little s, where the sample space is the capital S. Okay, so for example, say I have a coin and I flip it two times, and I want to see uh, whether the coin flip results in a heads or a tails. All right, so the sample space would be two heads. If I get a heads and a heads, I could get heads and tails, I could get tails and heads, or I could get tails and then tails. So this first sample space is if the order of the coin flips matters. If the order of the coin flips does not matter to me, so if I just wanna know how many heads are there and how many tails are there, then we could write our sample space like this. Two heads, two tails, and one of each. All right, and then if we want to look at just like one of these possible outcomes, we would just look at one of these elements. One element could be two tails, T and T. All right, next let's look at a subset of the sample space. So if we want to take some of the elements of the sample space, then we would call that an event. So an event is just the subset of the sample space. So for example, if we want to take one subset here, we could take the event of at least one tail. So then that set would look like we could have two tails or we could have one tail. And if the order matters, then we should also have this in our set. So this is a subset of our sample space S. All right, let's look at a couple more examples to really get these into your head. So for example, say that you ride the bus to work five days a week. So you have five days a week of work and you count how many days you have to run to get to the bus on time. So if you're doing really well, you run zero times to get to the bus, or you could run up to five days a week to get to the bus. So your sample space would be the set zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if we want to think about the event that you have to run more than three times, then that means you would have to run four times or five times, and so we have the set four and five. All right, one more example. Uh, you record the number of minutes that you exercise in a day. So if you don't exercise at all in a day, you would be exercising zero minutes, and if somehow you are exercising every single minute of the day, then you would have 60 times 24 equals 1440 minutes of exercise in a day. So this is our sample space. Zero minutes to 1440 minutes. Okay, so now let's think about one event. So the American Heart Association recommends that you exercise 30 minutes a day. So the event that you fall short of this recommendation is the set zero up to but not including 30. So if you're falling short, then you're exercising less than 30 minutes a day. So zero up to but not including 30. 